Hi Copic in the Craft Room fans, Michelle Houghton here. We are going to be doing several kind of holiday st um, stamped images here over the next month and a half or so. This first one is a stamp set by Waffle Flower. And really all I'm doing today is coloring this up with my Copic markers and I'm going to put it on a card at the end. I'm going to apologize in advance. I lose my lighting at the end of the day and I haven't pulled my lights out yet. And so I will not color all the way through the background, but you'll see the finished result in the end. So this is this adorable stamp. There's three pieces from the stamp set used, the angel and the girl and the tree. So I'm actually going to start on her sweater this time because I'm going to be adding some texture. And I'm using an R21 R2 series. So R24 is next. Notice I did not color all the way in with that R21 and I'm still not going to color all the way in even with my R24. Reds tend to bleed more. Um, it is part of their nature, and so I, part of my using them, I do not fill in all the way. R29 is the last group in that series, and this, at this point, I'm finally hitting those edges with that R29 as carefully as I can. I come back and start blending real lightly with that R24, and then I will do more blending with that R21. Now I can go back and forth a little bit and you'll see me do some of that with those three colors, but by adding so little at the start, it's one way to help control those colors from bleeding out. The few mistakes that I end up with on this particular sweater are more because I just went outside of the lines, not so much because I added too much color, which, that helps a lot. So the reason I did this is now I'm going to grab a washcloth and some colorless blender and a mister and I'm going to press real gently with a damp, not soaking, damp paper, that um, washcloth and give it that kind of nubby look like a sweater. Then I'm coming in on the skin with an E11 and a little bit of shading with E13. These are really simple images. There's not a whole lot of shape and form to her face. And so I can just add that touch of kind of shading in from the one side around the bottom edge to give it that roundness. R24 and R29 are gonna go on some of her little accessories like her headband, her bow, her shoes. And R29 just to kind of give a sense of form and shape. So really keeping it simple, small details. So a lot of these I'll just color in or do some of them just colored in. The next thing I'm adding is a little touch of pink on her cheeks with RV32. And I even that out with E11. Then the RV10 is coloring in the tights and the neck of her sweater and RV32 for just a touch of shading again underside of the one leg that's kind of kicked out and the back side of the other leg. The light source is kind of coming in from the right so you could see that on her face and then on her legs as well. E23 is the base of her hair color. Um, sorry it's a little bit off the screen I'll scoot it down here in a second. E25 is next. There's not a lot to show because the artist has given us a lot of that detail. So when I come in with the E29, I'm literally almost doing like every other little section and not flicking all the way across just to add that sense of texture. So G20 is kind of basing the tree and I don't fill it in. I'm kind of playing with this as I go. G21, I'm going to come in and add some of that texture of that kind of evergreen and those kind of conical layers that happen on an evergreen tree kind of coming up and underneath each layer and trying to do it a little unevenly so it's not real regular g24 is next this is one that i have in an original or a classic sketch marker so that's the square body and i've put a brush nib on it G28 is last. Again, I'm coming up underneath each of those layers with some, just some little flicks really to give that kind of vertical feel to those branches. A little more G24 and I'm filling in with G20. Now this one is kind of softening some of those and it's also filling in some of the white that was left behind. I'm just going down the tips with those ornaments and hitting them with R29. I hit the bow on the little cat's tail with the G28 and then the stars with Y35 and then I also do the little angel's wings with that Y35 as well and the halo. 
this is where I lose my light. So I apologize that the lighting at this portion is not real great. E50 is on the face of that little angel and E25 is filling in her hair. Then I'm hitting the um, kitty cat with a YR21 and I go ahead and fill him in with that, all the pieces, and then I turn him into like a little tabby or her into a little tabby and I'm using YR25 um, and 27 just to give some of those little tabby stripes along the sides of the face and the top of the head, down the back and legs, and a couple on the tail as well. Trunk of the tree is basing with E23, and then I do some stripes with E29 and smooth with E25, just to soften it up. I do a checkerboard just to keep it kind of de decorative as much as anything with a G28 and a Y35 on the base. Now, Instead of doing the entire background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what colors I use and then at the end you're going to see this entire card. I really just fill it in as if it's a neutral wall that the tree is sitting in front of. So I use an E50, a little bit of E53 for kind of like a baseboard, and then I do kind of a wood floor underneath her and that's going to be done with um, E31 and E35. So you're going to see that here when I show you the finished card. I just feel like you watching me, especially with the light not doing as well, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it's just a real smooth background behind her and then I create kind of this plank floor underneath her. And I've done that a couple times to create a wood floor look with these same colors. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I will have more holiday cards to come in the weeks to follow from different companies. Have a happy, colorful week.